to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast, where we invite you to spend a few minutes with the staff at Cook Library. I'm Lindsay Barber Petticourt, and I'm here today with Becky, one of our adult services librarians. We're here today to introduce Becky as one of our bookies, a new book, movies, and music recommendation resource here at Cook Memorial. Uh, So today we're going to find out more about Becky and why you might want to ask her for a recommendation or two. So thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thanks. It'll be fun. Uh, So uh, let's start off with movies, since that is one of the areas that you choose for here at the library and uh, something that you quite enjoy. Okay. Um, Let's start with maybe some movies you've enjoyed recently. I know you were recently on our Oscars podcast to talk about those. Right. So I was really, you know, viewing Oscar heavy for a while. So I've, you know, moved on trying to pick up some films that I didn't quite have time to watch Mm -hmm. before that. Um, And I have a couple that might be, you know, slightly under the radar. Um, I am a fan of the actress Charlotte Rampling, who is Mm -hmm. British, um, and she's had a long career. I think she's in her 70s now. Um, And I'm sure a lot of viewers are familiar with her. But she did a movie um, that's out, you know, within, I think, the past six months on DVD called I, Anna. So it's I, comma, Anna. Mm -hmm. And it's really a kind of dark detective noir you know, almost like those 30s, 40s movies. Okay. Classic. Um, but, you know, contemporary time period. Um, she plays a woman who becomes a suspect in a murder case. And the interesting twist is that the detective who is in charge of the invest- investigation really becomes infatuated with her. Mm. So he finds himself attracted to her. But then as he continues his investigation, he realizes she may have had something to do with this mm-hmm. with the murder. So I don't want to give too much away because there are some plot twists and stuff like that. But if you have a chance to check that one out, again, it's called I, Anna. stars Charlotte Rampling and Gabriel Byrne, who probably a lot of listeners are familiar with. He's been in a lot of, you know, British television productions, U.S. movies. Mm-hmm. So you'll recognize him when you see him. A movie that's out this weekend in the U.S. is called um, The Dinner, which is based on the Herman Koch bestseller from a couple of years ago that was a real psychological fiction. I loved it. I think it was a real um, twisty, kind of, again, dark. Right. Maybe I shouldn't be recommending all these dark (laughs) movies. But um, I think a lot of people have probably read the book. I know it was really popular with book clubs and things like that. So Mm -hmm. there's a new movie out this weekend starring Richard Gere and Laura Linney. Okay. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think it's getting, you know, okay reviews. Right. But in the meantime, um, people should really check out the Italian version of the movie that was based on the book. It came out a couple of years ago, and it is excellent. So I'm almost afraid to see the U.S. movie. Right. Because the Italian <laughs> version was so good. Um, and some of the things that people didn't like about the book mm-hmm. and – you know what those are. <laughs> I don't want to give too many things away. They're, we'll we'll let know, the readers yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they kind of fixed in okay. the Italian version of the movie. And um, it's it was really good. It's it, and Briefly, it's about two brothers and their wives who get together every month for mm. dinner. And one month the dinner goes basically awry because of something that they're worried about that their two children have done. Mm-hmm. So and it's kind of a moral dilemma about how far do you go to protect your kids and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. So, again, the Italian movie version, excellent. And I'm still really curious to see the U.S. version. So I'll see both. Is the Italian version just called The Dinner? The Dinner. You can find it. Yeah, you can find it just by putting in the the U.S. title. And Mm -hmm. another movie that's under the radar that I talked about a few months ago on another podcast was, um, it's actually a family-friendly movie, so I'll get away from the dark okay. stuff for a while. <laughs> um, it's called Hunt for the Wilder People. Mm-hmm. It um, takes place in New Zealand. It's a New Zealand film. And it's about a 13-year-old kid who kind of grew up in the city, always in trouble. He's kind of on his last chance before he goes to juvie, as he calls mm-hmm. it. And he gets placed with a, um, a couple who live in the New Zealand like bush country. And so at one point, a tragedy happens, and he kind of ends up on the run with the, you know, like his foster father. He calls Mm -hmm. him uncle. Um, Great movie. It's funny. It's kind of an adventure, you know, chase movie. The supporting characters are, you know, it's like an equivalent of a DCFS person. And, you know, the police, they're all Mm -hmm. in pursuit of Ricky, who's the 13-year-old, and his uncle. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's funny. They lend a lot of humor to the movie, too. So, And it's PG-13, totally great for families, and mm-hmm. it's just a lot of fun. So if you haven't seen that, that's available, too. 
Well, those all sound like um, really good recommendations, not stuff I think people would have stumbled upon Hopefully. Yeah. themselves. So. So are there any other, say, new movies that have kind of caught your eye that are in the library now? Finally in the library. You know what? Spring's always a great time for um, foreign film fans mm-hmm. and documentary buffs. The um, recent Oscar nominees this year are now finally all out on DVD and in the library. Oh, great. And, um, you know, definitely you can place um, place holds on those. So mm-hmm. the Oscar-nominated films were um, a Danish film called Land of Mine, Australian film called Tana, Mm-hmm. Swedish film called A Man Called Ove, which is based on a book, best-selling book. Um, a German film called Tony Erdman. Mm-hmm. And then the film that won the Oscar, a foreign film, is called The Salesman from Iran. And the interesting thing about that movie is that the same director directed the Oscar-winning foreign movie in 2011 called The Separation. Oh. So if you haven't seen that one yet, check that one out, too. It's really, really a great one. Mm-hmm. Um, documentaries are Fire at Sea, O.J. Made in America, I Am Not Your Negro, 13th, and Life Animated. So if you're, like I said, a foreign film buff or a documentary buff, go ahead and check those out. So Mm -hmm. they're all available finally. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's a lot of good options to check out right now. Um, So I think we will switch gears a little bit and um, maybe talk about some books. Uh, So what are some of your favorite um, book genres? I know that can be a, a Bit of a broad question. Yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about some dark movies. <laughs> right. Right. So like, Are there some dark books? I like some dark books, too. <laughs> um, I really like thrillers and psychological fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I read almost anything, maybe except for fantasy and science fiction. Also like memoirs a lot, historical fiction. Um, but I do, you know, I think we, some of us find ourselves gravitating, you know, back to some of the genres that we like best. Right. So, yeah. Right. Um, are there maybe some thrillers that you would like to talk about? Sure. Um, one of them that I've really enjoyed recently was called The Defense. Mm-hmm. It's a legal thriller, and it's by a British author called Steve Cavanaugh. Um, it is about a former con man named Eddie Flynn, and he gave up his con man ways and became an attorney. But as the book begins, he's taken some time off from the law because he had kind of a tragic case Recently, and he kind of swore off everything. Um, but as circumstances <laughs> warrant, um, he gets pulled back into the law. There's, uh, it takes place in New York City, and the Russian mob kidnaps his young daughter and threatens him or her, obviously, if he does not, um, you know, plead a case for them in court. So he finds himself back in the courtroom, obviously horribly worried about his daughter and having to deal with all these horrible people. Mm -hmm. And his con man ways come in handy because he's able to call in lots of favors from his old days and he has some a few tricks up his sleeve. So um, it's it's really fast paced, very tense, Mm -hmm. um, but also kind of entertaining. Mm -hmm. And this was a best selling series in the UK. So the defense was the first one. And this year, um, the next two will be published in the U.S., and they're called The Plea, which I think is out relatively soon, and The Liar, which will be out this fall. Okay. So um, if you're looking for a good new series, mm-hmm. I would recommend it. And I like legal thrillers. Unfortunately, a lot of times they don't always have a lot of courtroom action, which I really appreciate. Oh, okay. So this one definitely has a lot of courtroom action right. going on. So right. if you like that, this will be right up your alley. Um, so that was enjoyable. So another thriller that I read recently was called The Dry with Jane Harper, and it takes place in Australia, and it involves a federal agent who comes back to his hometown after a period of about 20 years because his best friend has died and is also suspected of killing his family. Oh, okay. And the the twist in the story is that years ago— the main character's name is Aaron, was a suspect in the murder of a really good friend of Mm. um, his and his best friend. So, And his best friend provided his alibi at the time. But he was kind of chased out of town because of all the suspicions. Nothing could ever be proven. Mm -hmm. And so he comes back now to find out. He doesn't believe that his friend harmed his family. So, But by coming back to town, he stirs up a, a lot of animosity and, um, you know, feels compelled to kind of find out what really happened back then. Mm-hmm. So the dry refers to the fact that his town is in the midst of just a, a huge drought. 
And so it affects the town, the town's people, and the town really is almost a character in the book. So mm-hmm. that one that one was excellent. So give that a try. Sounds good. All right. Well, those sound like um, some excellent recommendations that you have there. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us on the podcast, Becky. Sure. Uh, So if you would like to get a movie, book, or music recommendation from Becky or any of our other bookies, visit our website at cooklib.org slash bookies and fill out a form. While you're there, don't forget to also visit Shelf Life, the library's blog where we share what's new and interesting in books, movies, and music. The blog's address is shelflife.cooklib.org. If you'd like to get in touch and leave some feedback, you can send us a message at webmaster at cooklib.org. Also, if you enjoyed this podcast, keep spreading the word, and if you can, leave us a rating on iTunes. We'll be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. Mm -hmm.